Hello and welcome to Montgomery County Police Beat. I'm Patrick Lacefield, Director of Montgomery County's Office of Public Information. And I'm here along with Montgomery County Police Chief Tom Manger. Uh, today we're going to discuss proposed funding for the police department and the county's FY16 budget, uh, the developing plan for the use of body cameras by the police, and the department's community outreach efforts. Uh, Chief Manger, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure. Now, the county executive last week uh, released his operating budget for the coming year, the year that begins on July 1st. Um, how does that treat the police department? Well, I have to say that um, the uh, public safety typically does get, get treated pretty well in the budget. And, and um, this year, um, we're, we're coming off three previous years of getting additional staffing um, through a staffing plan that I had uh, uh, worked on with the county executive. And so, you know, uh, it was good to be able to add some, some resources over the last three years. This year, uh, we don't add much staffing, but there's, there's some pretty significant things in the budget that are, I think, um, uh, notable. And um, probably the, the, the one that get, is going to get the most attention is the body-worn cameras. Uh, we are um, going to, uh, in the next few months, work on a pilot program where we're going to outfit about 100 officers or so with body-worn cameras so that we can test the equipment, we can you know, just, just work through what issues we have to work through um, with the cameras because this is very new stuff. And um, the, uh, the, our hope is that once we do the pilot program, we're able to um, look at implementing the, uh, the, the cameras department-wide after that. Now, do you see the body cameras movement in police departments around the country? Is this a reaction to Ferguson to some extent? I think it is to, uh, to some extent. I mean, the conversations that were started um, because of, of Ferguson are, uh, have a lot to do with uh, trust and confidence in the police. They have a lot to do with the relationship between the police and the community. Um, and so I, I think that there, uh, there's a significant segment of the public that, um, that, that is uh, uh, really in favor of uh, seeing more accountability with the police. And, um, and one of the ways that you know, folks are talking about it is through the body-worn camera program. So, so I, I have to tell you that, that there are thousands of police departments around the country that are uh, really in the same boat as we are, that they're looking at it, they're, um, they're, they're trying pilot programs and, and looking at, uh, at implementing it department-wide at some point. Now, this comes after Montgomery County has for some years now had video cameras in police cars. Mm -hmm. How are you able to judge how that's helped in terms of accountability and protecting both the public and protecting officers? Well, I think that the greatest um, benefit to the cameras and the cars, I mean, while, while uh, increased accountability is certainly a nice byproduct, mm -hmm. um, really it's, it's the, um, uh, the evidence that uh, officers have um, on those traffic stops that they've been able to use in court um, that has really been the biggest benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and that same benefit will, will be there for the body-worn cameras mm -hmm. as well. But um, the, the uh, cameras in the cars, I think that it was uh, something that, you know, we had been looking at for a long time. It took, uh, you know, a few years for us to phase it in um, to, to get uh, the, the cam all the cameras out there. And, uh, but certainly um, it has helped in terms of dealing with, uh, with some complaints that we get, you know, when we get a complaint uh, about an officer's um, uh, demeanor or we get a complaint uh, from a person who says, you know, I got stopped for this, but I didn't do that. Um, we, when we can go to the tape. Go to the video tape. Um, it, it really uh, makes, we can usually resolve those complaints fairly mm -hmm. quickly. Now, what do you think are some of the, the common misconceptions or maybe expectations that aren't justified that people may have about body cameras. I mean, they're not really, they're not a panacea. No, they're not. Um, there, there are uh, some significant issues that we, that we need to deal with, and especially in the state of Maryland, where um, we have a, a, a two-party consent wiretap law. That is, if I'm going to audio record you, um, I have to have your consent to do that. And so when we have, we, uh, when we put these cameras on the officers, there is going to be the question of, 
you know, do I have to get everybody's consent that I'm recording? So if I'm talking to you and someone else walks up, do I have to then stop and get their consent? And, and what if someone doesn't give consent? They say, no, I don't want to be recorded. So the officer is going to have to turn the camera off. Well, if they're, they're um, you know, if they have to turn the camera off because someone doesn't agree to be recorded, then, uh, and something happens, then all of a sudden the police department's on the defensive and folks are saying, well, gee whiz, you know, uh, why did the officer turn the camera off? So uh, the, 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 uh, the wiretap issue uh, and, and the two-party consent is one big issue we need to deal with. The other big issue is privacy. Um, you know, there, there are some folks, and, and the ACLU is one group that is lobbying in Annapolis to have any video that uh, is taken by a body-worn camera um, to be public information, that it would be, that the public would have a right to see any video at all. Well, you know, there's a lot of folks who say, yeah, 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 that sounds fine. But the fact is that if I'm talking to you out on a, on a sidewalk in, in downtown Silver Spring, well, there's not much expectation of privacy if we're standing out in public. But what happens when an officer is called to someone's home? And whether that person is a crime victim and you're going to interview them or, or we go there because we got a complaint about a disturbance at a home, you know, you certainly have a, a greater expectation. You've stepped of into their yard. You've stepped onto their property. Well, and, and yeah. wait till you go into their house. Right. I mean, they have the, you have the, the highest expectation of privacy there. Right. So, um, you know, when some if someone says, "I don't want you to record this," then an officer again is 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 um, required to by law to turn the camera off, as the law stands now. So, um, so there there there's a lot of things that we need to work through. Mm -hmm. so that um, it, the, the cameras provide the uh, benefit that we're hopeful that they can provide. And again, the, the biggest benefit that I see is the evidence that w can be collected um, as an officer does their job. Um, I, I have seen some studies that do indicate that, they, that officers get fewer complaints if they're wearing the camera. I mean, it's just human nature. If you know you're being recorded, you're typically on your best behavior, whether you're the police officer or whether you're the person they're dealing with. Because mm -hmm. I walk up to you and, and I say, you know, I'm recording this. Well, all of a sudden you think, well, okay, well, maybe I, I shouldn't you know, right. misbehave or I should be right. more cooperative right. or whatever. So, I mean, it has a lot of, of, of good benefits. Now, are there issues that, that your officers may be concerned about in terms of implementing these? Uh, sure. I mean, you, th you think about it, and, I, and that's one of the reasons that um, I, I want to wear one myself because um, while I have uh, I've been a police officer for 38 years, and, and when I started, I mean, I was out responding to 911 calls and making arrests and, you know, uh, writing tickets and, you know, doing all the things that a police officer does. Uh, but I never, I never had to wear a camera. And that's, the, um, uh, so I want to uh, understand um, how that's going to impact um, uh, my officers um, when, when they uh, start wearing these cameras. So um, I, I, and of course, the, you know, some people can say, well, it's, it's sending the message that we don't trust the police. And you know, um, certainly some people could see it that way. Um, there's other folks that say, no, this is, this is, and I, I believe wholeheartedly that what this is going to show is that, you know, cops are out there doing their job the way they're supposed to be doing it 99% of the time. So you get some folks say, well, we're going to, we, you know, we're going to deal with that 1%. But I can tell you that, that I think um, officers will be, uh, it'll take some getting used to. Um, I, it'll, uh, I hope it doesn't impact their um, uh, their instincts to, to react, um, you know, as, as they've been trained. I don't mm -hmm. think it will. Uh, but, uh, you know, just think about it if you had a camera on you, yourself. And, and I mm -hmm. asked, you know, the public to put, you know, put, put it, you know, think about, um, you know, if you had a camera on all the time, right. how that would impact you in your day-to-day -day activities. Right. Be a lot more careful. You, you would, <laughs> and and you and you'd always have the the, um, the the concern that gee whiz, if I make a mistake, you know, is is this you know it's, what's, it's, what's it's preserved? Yeah, yeah, and um, and and listen, I realize, and I've said many many times that um, being a police officer is a tough job. There's there are no shortage of ways to make mistakes. You're put in challenging situations all the time, where you know some officers aren't always at their best. But the fact is that that 99% um, of the time, my cops are are reacting the way they're supposed to react, doing what they're supposed to do. And I think that the cameras will, will just affirm that. Now, talking about that for a second, you've read very carefully the Department of Justice report on Ferguson. Yes. Uh, both, both on the incident itself and also on what was happening in the Ferguson Police Department. Mm -hmm. uh, 
any reactions that you have to that? Was that was that interesting? Oh yeah. my gosh, I, I was riveted, especially to the. Um, I mean, the, the report about the shooting itself was certainly interesting because it cut through a lot of the misinformation that has sort of come along, uh, you know, uh, through the media and, and through the social media as well. But it was the report about the city, about the police department, um, that uh, that demonstrated so so clearly the pattern and practice of discrimination that was going on in that city. When uh, when you have um, you know uh, uh, officers that are that are having competitions about well when I stop somebody how many how many citations can I write that person uh, when that becomes a, a, a you know a kind of part of the culture uh, when you have a a, a, a a city manager that's saying hey chief I need more tickets next month because you know we're, we're we need the revenue coming in and that mm -hmm. police officers are are uh, assigned in enforcement activities and deployed in terms of you know, let's bring some money into the city versus let's keep this this community safe. Right. And um, I, I, can, I can tell you, I was I was shocked by it. There were um, uh, by by the, the how blatant this this um, uh, this discussion was between the chief and the city manager and and uh, the folks. And were distinctions being made in terms of, for example, the writing the tickets? Were more tickets being written against people of color? They were. Than they were against people who were Caucasian. Yeah, they they were, and and I think that there's you know that in and of itself um, is not uh, I think does not prove a pattern and practice right. because uh, even even in in any jurisdiction you're you're going to deploy your officers where there's the most activity where the most calls for service, and and so you you can make a, a case for well we had more police officers in in the in the sections of the city that had right. you know more crime. But where you can't, where it, it's demonstrated, in my opinion, that you had bias-based policing is when you have, there were 75 people that were identified as getting uh, four or five or more uh, charges at a traffic stop. 75 people um, were targeted. 73 out of the 75 were African American. Right. So clearly, th that demonstrates a pattern in practice by the police department mm -hmm. that, you know, they, they had someone stopped and said, okay, this is the person we're going to write four right. or five more or more citations to. So clearly those are the kinds of things that demonstrated a culture there that um, was w that was violating people's uh, constitutional rights on a daily basis. Now recently you had a forum at the People's Baptist Church in Silver Spring about community policing. Uh, we, we just have a few minutes left but what came out of that for you? Well that was, uh, um, of course, and, and, and I am out in the public all the time and, and, and meeting with folks. This was, um, we had about 200 people there. We talked about community policing. We talked about use of force. We talked about um, police-involved shootings. We, we talked about a lot of different topics that were on the minds of the public. And uh, I think that, the, again, those are so important to have those conversations, uh, you know, especially when you're not in time of a crisis. And um, so it was, I think the, the feedback that I get from the public is always terrific, but I always enjoy getting the chance to, to explain to people how we do our job. This is like building trust every day. I, you know, and you got to. It's right. relentless activity. Right. Well, Chief, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Patrick Lacefield here with Montgomery County Police Chief Tom Manger. Uh, we thank you for watching, and please join us again next month for another edition of Montgomery County Police Beat. Donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. 
Today, one in 88 children is diagnosed with autism. That's a 1,000% increase in the last 40 years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org signs.